for a little peek behind the curtain that is just so blatantly public in its propaganda now, we go to the New York Post. Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank boss Neil Kashkari, hard shutdown can save economy. <laughs> Locking the country down really hard for a period of several weeks could save the economy from long-term pain, the president of the Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank said Sunday. Now, really hard. How are we going to give it to the American people really hard? If they bend over and let us give it to them right where we want it, how are we going to give it to them really hard? When we're going to shut down the economy and reboot it, how do we want to shut it down really hard? Oh, God. How do we want to make it for Americans struggling right now? Really hard. You know, who is this, right? The president of one of the uh, branches of the Federal Reserve System. Not exactly, uh, you know, the big kahuna as, as the chair, but certainly a credible source here. What's, he, what's his incentive? What's his motivation? He runs the, a, a chunk of the mainstream American banking system of the fiat currency of the U.S. dollar. What's his motivation? to keep the super rich getting richer and the rest of us getting poorer. So when someone like this says, we need something, you go, okay, we need the opposite, you know, nine times out of 10. Or when you look at what they're, what they're really advocating for, when it's, uh, you know, more centralized control, more central planning, you know, that's what they're advocating for. In an interview with CBS Face the Nation, Neil Kashkari said that the only way to have a real robust economic recovery is to quash the flare-ups of the coronavirus that continue to pop up across the country. Shutting things down for a month or six weeks would allow the nation's case count to get low enough that the government's testing and contact tracing efforts could effectively contain future spreading, Kashkari said, adding that if serious action isn't taken, the country will have this raging virus spreading with flare-ups and local lockdowns for the next year or two. And he knows what he's doing. And, and I want to go back and remind you just briefly of what we've covered as the commercial real estate crisis that America is going through right now. That is, it's been going through for months because when the lockdown started, even just being locked down for a period of weeks sent a lot of businesses over the edge or at least into hibernation. For a lot of small business owners, it was just there's no way we can afford the rent. And then they, you saw, and we covered this in Florida where, you know, on, on the commercial uh, coast, whatever, uh, on the east coast of Florida, that you could just drive up and down and see for sale, for lease signs on all, all sorts of commercial properties because, you know, it was, it was everything retail was taking a huge hit. And what that meant was that the landlords even, couldn't pay their rent. And so a lot of those commercial properties went up for sale. And then the price of commercial real estate went off the cliff. And so the result of that was that who had cash? Who had cash lying around? Well, gee, friends of bankers. And if you didn't have it laying around, who could print it for you? Oh, the bankers. Yeah, fractional reserve banking. You can create money out of thin air. Federal Reserve overnight lending window. You can create money out of thin air, lend it to the banks that they can then go lend out. And uh, to, to, to their friends, their, their main, main financial interest, and that money is multiplied. The rich get much, much richer. The rich, super rich get much, much richer, and the poor get much, much poorer. The actual effect of this is a consolidation of wealth and power. Who's bind up? So this is like literally, and, and, and this is why, and this is a fake quote from Jefferson, by the way, but it's quite prescient regardless that if you allow uh, central banks to control the money supply, uh, well, I fear that our... Uh, our, our, uh, our, our, our descendants will wake up homeless on the continent their forefathers conquered. And you go, yeah, well, that's what's happening. Homelessness is going up. We're seeing a surge in that. We've covered those stories. And it's just, you know, another measure of the tragedy of this and the homelessness. But it, who's going to own stuff? We're all going to be renters. And if that wasn't the case already with, you know, the modern system of how do you buy a house? And it, it, it's, you know, a lease, a mortgage, whatever the case may be. You don't own it. And even if you do, you're paying property taxes to government. This is not freedom. This is not real home ownership. So when he says we want to shut down, what is Neil Kashkari actually saying? He's saying, hey, let's go back to that. Let's let's get everybody inside their homes. Let's lock everything down so that people are desperate. So that, you know, and like even right now, I have a friend 
who, who's trying to get here to Gardenia, who wants to make the leap to live off grid. He's trying to sell a car. This is a really hard time to sell a car. I mean, this is people, like, people aren't just dipping into their savings. They're dipping into those assets. You know, there are a lot of Americans who just, oh, they got a second car. Oh, they got a beater car laying around or, or whatever it is. They're trying to, they're, they're trying to liquidate. Now, there's another story that you could, you could find by just tracking prices and, and looking at the stories and analyzing what's on Craigslist. If you don't know what Craigslist is, it's, it's, it's just a big website for uh, it's, it, you know, basically uh, internet classified ads. It's, it's, it's the best dominant simple system for that. Uh, you know, and broken up into cities and, and areas. I use it. It's great. And you can already see that there are trends shifting. There. So uh, back to, you know, Neil Kashkari quote here, we're going to see many, many more business bankruptcies, small businesses, big businesses, and that's going to take a lot of time to recover from, to rebuild those businesses, and then to bring workers back in and re-engage them in the workforce. Yeah, and that's going to be a much slower recovery for all of us, the U.S. And, and you know, we know what you're doing, Neil. We know what you're doing, and it's sick. It's really sick. The U.S. economy last week suffered its worst blow since the Great Depression with the nation's gross domestic, gross domestic product GDP, the value of all goods and services produced here, 9.5% smaller in the second quarter than the first. That is a huge contraction where you expect consistent growth. More than 25 million Americans lost the $600 per week jobless payment bonus introduced at the height of the coronavirus crisis in March. And we're not at the height of the crisis yet because the coronavirus crisis is not the coronavirus crisis. It's the coronaphobia crisis, the government response crisis. After lawmakers failed to come to an agreement on the benefits, Democrats wanted to expand the $600 bonus until the first quarter of 21. But the White House and Republicans are advocating for a $200 payment, arguing the current rate is too high and discourages Americans from returning to work and blah, blah, blah. Look at us, political clowns, be distracted. In the interview, Kashkari said that while he did think the $600 bonus could be a disincentive at some point, it would still be helpful now while tens of millions are out of work because he wants people to accept this. As he said, quote, there's just so many fewer jobs than there are workers available. Yeah, no kidding. It's designed that way. Quote, when we get the unemployment rate eventually back down to 5% and we want to get it back down to 4% or 3.5% where it was before, yes, that disincentive to work becomes material. Now, again, the employment thing. He's he's mean he's back to back to the jobs. Jobs. I, they took our jobs. Oh, it's why? Why jobs? Because what is a job? Well, the way they're measuring it, they want full employment, they want full wage slavery. This is the objective. The goal should not be 100 percent employment, but 100 percent retirement and wealth and financial independence. And that is what is being robbed from us. And the potential for small businesses is being robbed from us right before our very eyes right now what does it mean when banks go back to owning all the real estate they go back you come to own all the commercial real estate you can't own a small business you can't start a small business without permission of the bank even restaurants most of them don't own their business their, their buildings and donald trump came out and said it directly well don't worry they'll come back just under new ownership well that's across the board this is the shutdown and the reboot of the economy come to life. And when this mother fricker, Neil Kashkari, is he just coming out, this is the Minneapolis Federal Reserve President and CEO, Neil Kashkari, just blatantly in the open saying, we need a really hard shutdown to save the economy. It, you should be able to see through this and know what he's really talking about. 